Hey everyone, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you Spellbinder's large die of the month for December. If you are unfamiliar with their die of the month kits, I will link all of the information in the description. So at first glance, this can look a little intimidating. I know when I saw it, I was like, what is this? But it is so easy to use and it's so fun. This interactive card die does all of the work for you. And before you know it, you have a really cool individual card, an interactive card. And I think anybody would really love to get this. You get lots of little embellishment pieces. So we're going to go ahead and go through all of the pieces that you get as we're going. The one thing I do not use in this particular card are these flower and leaf dies, but those are all just sort of supplemental dies that you can use to decorate your card, not instrumental to the die cutting process. So the first thing we're going to cut out now is our card base. This entire first die is the card base. This will make it interactive. You don't have to do anything else really to it. As you can see, it sort of partially cuts that out and you get these lines here, uh, these crease lines that you can fold into each other. And I'll show you that in just a moment. Another really great thing about the die this month is that it allows you to use pattern paper. We all have a lot of pattern paper laying around, I'm sure. So it's really great when we get dies or supplies that help us use all of that pattern paper. Another great thing about using pattern paper is that you're able to make it a masculine card fairly easily just by using some sort of masculine paper. These two dies sort of go hand in hand together. The inner die is the circle that cuts out the sentiment many thanks, and the outer circle is a scalloped edge, and this will actually cut the circle. If you just use that inner circle die, all it's going to do is cut out the center uh, uh, sentiment that says many thanks. So if you actually want the circle to come out itself, you'll need to use the scalloped edge circle die with it. And it just fits right over it. It's really simple, but it's nice because you don't have to use it. So if you wanted to put your sentiment really sort of like inset or onto a card front without cutting it out, you have that option as well. So I'm using my Spellbinders tool in one, and this is really helpful for intricate dies. You can cut out all the tiny little pieces. I could have used that roller, but there's really not too many pieces here, so I just poked them all out um, with the pointy edge. And here are all of the pieces and how you would assemble them. So as you can see, like I was saying, if I cut out sort of a more masculine pattern paper, this would easily turn into a masculine card. And I really love that it's so simple and very versatile. You can use it for anyone. I'm going to make that centerpiece a shaker part. So not only is this an interactive card, but it's going to be a shaker card as well. So I took a circle die roughly the same size as the a sort of sentiment circle die cut and I'm going to adhere the sentiment die cut right over that circle acetate piece and this is going to become the very front of my shaker and it's going to hold all of the sequins and the shaker mix that I put in there. This is always my least favorite part of making a shaker. I really dislike having to do lots of layers of foam tape, but it really is important to be able to get the shaker mix to move. I've recently run out of my very favorite Spellbinders foam that I will link in the description. This foam is so thick and sturdy and it's absolutely perfect for shakers. And I was kicking myself for not replenishing my stash sooner. I do have it on the way now, but I will link that in the description because it's a lifesaver when it comes to shaker cards. But I don't have it, so right now I'm just using a double layer of foam tape right around the edge of my circle sentiment. And this will help it pop up so that when I put the sequins inside of the shaker portion, they'll be able to move around with the dimension. So I'm going to go ahead and put that to the side now while I assemble my card. And I'm going to take these two side pieces here and adhere them to where they belong onto the card base. 
And these sort of act as a card front, but like I said, you could do any pattern paper that you like in order to sort of fit it to who you're giving the card to. You could actually leave the entire card base blank if you really wanted to, but it does come with those really nice uh, dies that allow you to cut these out so that they fit perfectly. I'm using double-sided tape or a tape runner to adhere this. You could use glue if you wanted to be sure to get it exactly in the center. There's only about an eighth of an inch of a border around where the pattern paper pieces fit in and the remainder of the card. So I think if it's a little bit off to the right or to the left, it doesn't make too big of a difference towards the design of the card, but if you like to be very meticulous and exact, you could definitely use glue if you wanted to have a little bit more wiggle room. So now that those pieces have been adhered to the card base, I'm now going to fold the score lines that were created in that first card base die. And both of these sides, you're going to fold to the left. So for the right side, you're going to fold it inward and you can see that piece of cardstock hanging out that is the circle where the sentiment goes. And then for the left side, you fold it the same way and this time it's sort of towards the outer side of the card, but they both will go to the left. So that way when you hold it like this and closed, you can pull either side and that circle part swings open so that you can adhere your sentiment circle right there and you get that surprise sentiment when you pull it apart. Now I'm going to go ahead and create my shaker bit for this card and I'm going to use this shaker mix and this is by Trinity Stamps. I will link it in the description. They've got really great mixes and sequins over there. And again, this is not a necessary step. Of course, you could just adhere the uh, circle sentiment right there, but I wanted to give it a little something extra. And I thought that adding a shaker element would make my card stand out a bit and look really nice. So once I have poured the amount that I think I would like in the shaker portion. I will go ahead and remove the tape piece and adhere it there to the center. And then you just wanna make sure that everything is working fine. And there's quite a bit of room between where the circle sentiment goes and where the opening is. So the double layer of foam tape and the dimension that it gives doesn't prevent you from opening the card at all, which is great to know. I'm now going to go in and use the scalloped border die. And I remember that I had gotten some really very cool sort of cloth or lacy material paper. And I thought that it would look really great with the scalloped border die. I just think it looks like lace and it adds a nice dainty pop to the card without taking too much away from the design. So I go ahead and adhere that to the left portion of the card panel and then I adhere it as well to the right portion of the card panel and it fits right in there without going into the where the circle sentiment is and I love that this has all been thought of ahead of time so it all just matches and looks really nice and fits in together and I love that little surprise sentiment that you get folding out and I think that people will really be impressed when they get your card in the mail. And speaking of the mail, this, when it's all closed, fits into a standard A2 size envelope. So you don't need any special envelopes. You can send it just as you normally would, and then they'll open it and they get a surprise little pop there. And I just absolutely love that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed the video. As always, links to all of my Instagram, blog, and Pinterest are all in the description, as well as links to the information about the Spellbinders Die of the Month kits. Thanks so much again, and I will see you very soon. Thank you. Bye.